Hello, welcome to Analog Output. You might recognize this module as the gear sequencer I told you about a while ago. It's got an input for a clock. Up here, we have a sample and hold. It's got an input for a clock. Over on the right, over there, we've got another sequencer. It's got an input for a clock. So yeah, clock inputs, useful. You can use a just a square wave from a low frequency oscillator if you happen to have a low frequency oscillator to spare. Or in the case of the sample and hold, there's a built in simple square wave oscillator and you can use that to clock the module. Either way though, you're using an oscillator and using an oscillator for a clock has a couple of drawbacks. One is it's not all that precise, not all that stable. So if you're recording a track at 120 beats per minute, well, you can you can dial up something pretty close to 120 beats per minute there. But then if you come back two weeks later and you want to record another track to go with it, you're not going to be able to get exactly the same tempo. They're not going to be exactly in sync with each other. Uh, another drawback to using an oscillator is clock division. Sometimes you want to have a second clock that's like half the frequency or a quarter of the frequency or a third the frequency or something of a clock. And you can do that with an uh, oscillator. If you have the hardware to do it, you can use a circuit based on a binary counter to do division by 2 or 4 or 8 or 16 or something. You can use a decade counter chip to do division by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. Um, what if you want to divide by like 14 or 17 or 23? Well, you probably don't want to very often. But once in a while, maybe you'd have some reason to want to do that. And if you want to do that, it gets complicated. On the other hand, if you have a clock that's based on a microcontroller circuit, microcontrollers are able to keep track of time very accurately. So you can get a nice, precise, repeatable, exactly 120 beats per minute clock. And if you want to divide that by any number you want, it's equally easy whether it's 2 or 7 or 23 or whatever. It's all, it's just a number in software. So, there's some advantages to having a microcontroller-based clock module, and that's what we have here. So, it's got a display telling us it's going at 120 beats per minute. Beats being a musical idea, it's the thump, thump, thump uh, tempo of, basic tempo of your music. It's often a beat is corresponding to a quarter note but not always, so I'll talk about beats rather than quarter notes. But the thing is that sometimes you need a clock that's running at speeds corresponding to shorter notes, like eighth notes or sixteenth notes or something. So sometimes you want to have a clock that's giving you more than one pulse per beat. Well, if you look on the display here, it's saying in small letters, 4 PPB means four clock pulses per beat. 480 uh, ppm clock pulses per minute, just four times 120. And if I start up this clock and listen to my sample and hold through the oscillator, there it is. We've got a beat output, which corresponds to this red LED. It's flashing 120 beats per minute. We've got a clock output, which is flashing at four times that rate, four clock pulses per beat. We've also got clock divided by two, which is 240 beats per minute. We've got clock divided by four, which is 120 beats per minute. It's the same as the beat at this moment, but it could be different. We'll see that later. We've got clock divided by eight for 60 beats per minute. 
And then we've got this output that's labeled clock divided by n. And at the moment, it's giving us uh, clock division by 16, or 30 beats per minute. But that can also change, as we will see. If I want to change the tempo, well, of course, I just turn the knob. This is a rotary encoder. It goes clickety-click, and every time I click it, it goes up by one beat per minute, or down by one beat per minute, which is nice. You can set whatever tempo you want, as long as it's an even number of beats per minute. You can go up to uh, as much as 208 beats per minute. Let me turn that up there for you. It's 140 something, it's 150 something, it's 160 something, 170, 180, 190, 200, 208. So, and of course the clock pulses are coming at four times that rate. But that's a lot of, that's a lot of turning this thing. You have to crank this thing a lot to get it up there. And you can crank it down to a very low tempo uh, a uh, conventional music, you probably wouldn't want less than about maybe 40 beats per minute, but maybe you're doing some very, very slow ambient stuff or something like that. Um, this thing will allow you a clock speed as low as seven and a half beats per minute. But you can see it would take a long time to get down to that. That plus the fact that you know, when you're up at around 120, 150 beats per minute, um, you know, say you're at 120, say you're at 120, and you want to go faster. Well, how often are you going to want to go to 121? It's almost unnoticeably faster. If you want to go faster than 120, you probably want to go up like 126 or something like that. If you want to go slower, you probably want to go down to like 114 or something like that. On the other hand, if you're at like 10 beats per minute, from 10 to 11, that might be too big a jump. You might want to be able to go to 10 and a half. So, up here it says I and C. It means increment. We're in the increment mode. There's another mode you can get into. If you long press on here, it's called MM, and this stands for Melville's Metronome. And if you've ever seen a mechanical metronome, the clockwork kind of metronome, it's got a thing that goes back and forth like this, and it's got a weight that goes up and down on there, and it's calibrated with notches at like 120, 126, 114. Not every single number in between, just particular numbers. These are standard metronome marking numbers. And in MM mode, it goes just to those standard metronome markings. 116, I guess, is standard, not 114. Which means it's a lot faster to get up to 100, 208, and it's a lot faster to get down to 60. At this point, it's only jumping by 3 when you go upward. Down to 40, here it's only going by 2, and then we can go even further down. Here we are at uh, 10 beats per minute, and when you turn it, it increments by less than one beat per minute, all the way down to the minimum 7.5. So that's our knob, and if you don't want to deal with these numbers like this, well, you can just say, well, I just want a kind of a thump, 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 thump tempo, all right, thump, 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 thump. And we've got it. Or if I want a faster one, thump, 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 thump. Or slower, thump, 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 thump. Okay, so tap tempos like that. And that's our standard behavior. But we can go into a settings menu and change the standard behavior. If I do a long press here, we get a menu. It's got four items. Top item says divide by n amount, and the amount is 16. So that's telling me that this output here is giving us the clock divided by 16. But I can use the encoder 
to change that value. I can make it, oh, let us say, I can turn it down to 12. Or I can turn it down to 8. If I turn it down to 8, then you can see it's flashing at the same time as this. These are both divide by 8 outputs now. But I can make this any divide by anything up to, I think it's, I think it divides up by up to 64 if I remember what I programmed it to. Okay. Now the second menu item is divide by n offset. Here you can see divide by 8 and divide by n are flashing at the same time, but if I change the divide by n offset from 0 to 1, then you can see this output is coming one clock pulse after that clock pulse. If I make it 2, then it's coming two clock pulses later. If I make it 4, it's coming four clock pulses later, and so forth. My third menu item is the pulse per beat. As I said earlier, we've got it set up for four clock pulses per beat, but I can change that. I can make it one clock pulse per beat. And now you can see the clock is flashing once for every beat. Okay, it's not changing the tempo. If we go back here and look at the tempo, it's, well, it's 120. But it's changing how many clock pulses there are in each 120 uh, beats per minute. Or, you know, I can uh, turn the uh, pulses per beat upward. I can make it 8 pulses per beat. I can make it uh, 12 pulses per beat. I can turn it all the way up to uh, 24 pulses per beat is maximum. Let's tell it to calm down a little bit. Let's make it 4 again. Okay. And then the last menu item is width. And this is just the duty cycle of the clock pulse. Um, tell you what, let's Let's go back here and set a nice slow clock speed, slower than that. Okay, and if you're looking at the LED, it goes on and off and on and off and so forth and so on. Now, if I change the duty cycle, uh, it's at 50% now. I can run this down to say 5%. And you can see the, it just flashes very briefly. So the clock pulse is on only 5% of the time. It's off 95% of the time. Or if I turn it up the other way to 95, you can see that this light is almost always on. It's only off for a br very brief bit. The default is this position here, 50%, where it's on half the time, off half the time. And then we can go back to our normal running mode like this by again long pressing on that button. And I've been fiddling with these controls enough that uh, it hasn't happened yet, but if I were to spend a minute talking to you and not touching the controls, the display would go blank. That's just because uh, we've got an OLED display here which can burn out if you use it too much. So it uh, it blanks the display whenever you leave the controls untouched for a minute. That's how the module works, and it's a pretty simple module. Uh, it's based around an Arduino Nano microcontroller, and has a few other components besides that. Not very much to it. If you would like to build one of these things, or if you'd like to build something based on one of these things, it's all open source hardware and software. Everything's up on the GitHub repository that you'll find down in the uh, description below. There, screen went blank, told you. And uh, you're welcome to, to make one, modify it, come up with a EuroRack version, whatever. I'd be really interested to see what you do. 
there it is. Hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you like, subscribe, and stay tuned until the next time on Analog Output.